Good morning. It's the great one himself, Cynical Libertarian Society. C-Y-N-L-I-B-S-O-C.com on the internet. I'm sitting here. Just got up. Overslept this morning. Didn't get up till 7. Sitting here with a cup of coffee. Checking the email. Nothing exciting going on. Looking at the wonderful weather. It's 54 degrees outside already. So I'm pretty sure it's going to be warm today. Might be in for a bike ride or something. Get the fuck outside. Get some fresh air or some sunshine. My brain started working because that's what my brain does. And I felt brilliance coming on. So I refilled my cup of coffee and turned on the recorder. And here we are. I have two things I want to be brilliant about today. Normally, I try to confine anarchy moment to one topic. But I might, be, I might do two topics. We'll see how I feel. Here's the first one. And this is the sort of stuff I think about first thing in the morning. Because I think, most of you, you wake up, see, now we're already on three topics. Most of you, you wake up in the morning and what you think about is, how much of Obama's cum can I swallow today? Or, how many hours can I sit in front of the television? Or, Oh, I'm sure I'm excited to go to work today and sit in my cubicle and be a slave for a rich person who doesn't care about me making minimum wage. Or some of you just wake up in the morning and you think, man, I hope my welfare deposit goes into my bank account today. If not, I'm going to call and complain. But I wake up in the morning and I think about brilliant, brilliant life-changing things. I just recorded Stating the Obvious, I think it was 167 yesterday, where I was absolutely brilliant in pointing out that if the resources of the war on drugs were turned towards getting clean water to people in third world countries who didn't have clean water, everybody would have clean water within six months. And the brilliance of that illustrates that because those of you who are stupid believe we live in a democracy and you believe that the government does what the people want, then this shows us that obviously what you want as the citizens of the United States is you want the war on drugs and you want people in third world countries to not have clean water. Because after all, this is a democracy, right? And Obama is president, right? And he is the Messiah, right? I mean, you can stop me anytime I'm wrong. There's so many levels to what's wrong with all of that thinking. But as I've said before, the important thing about the whole illusion of democracy can be summed up by reminding you that the Founding Fathers created the presidency so the stupid people would think we had a king and the reason there's a popular vote for the president is so the stupid people will think they elected the king. Now, in fact, in fact, this is going to shatter your world. Get ready. In fact, Hussein Obama, your Lord and Savior, the Messiah, the first affirmative action president and the second coming of Jesus Christ, he does in fact not run the government. The government is run by not lizard people from outer space and not the Jews, but it is run by a conglomerate of shadow organizations, the corporations, the CIA, the NSA, the bureaucracy. I've talked about this before. There's a brilliant, oh God, I need to see if I can get it on Netflix. I haven't seen it in so long. And it's based on a book. There's actually two books. I think one of them is called, at least two books. One is called Yes Minister. The other one is called Yes Prime Minister. I actually have one of them on this bookshelf somewhere. I haven't read the bloody thing yet. It's a British book, and they made it into a TV series. 
And the premise of the series, it was a comedy, but then again, that's one of the brilliant things about it. It was a comedy because it was so true. The series is about a man who's a politician. He gets elected to office. He becomes a minister in the English government. And he goes in with the intention of changing things. And he goes in with the intention of just, you know, doing good. And he gets in and he finds out that the bureaucracy is such that he can't do anything he wants to do. Every time he tries to do something, then it's, there's another character who plays the main bureaucrat. So they're essentially they're each other's foils. So every time he tries to change anything, the bureaucrat, oh well, you can't do that because of subsection such and such, paragraph 19 of such and such charter or whatever. There's always some legal minutia, maneuvering, reasoning that the bureaucrats do to prevent him from making any headway. And it's funny because it's true. That is how the government works. And this is something I've talked about before. <clears throat> I'm going to talk about it again, because that's what I do. That and losing my voice. <coughs> Sally sells seashells by the seashore. I didn't do any vocal warm-ups before doing this. <clears throat> yes. I imagine that when somebody gets elected president... I'm sure they have an inkling of the bureaucracy and what awaits them. But I'm sure when they go to their first meeting at the White House, whatever, the first official meeting with the shadow organizations and they sit down, I'm sure they're not prepared to be told that they are going to do what they're told to do, not what they want to do. And we see what happens when presidents do what they want to do. Kennedy got a bullet. Ronald Reagan got a bullet. Right, we saw, I mean, we saw. Ben Stone has done a great podcast. He's over at badquaker.com, for those of you who don't know. And Ben Stone is the greatest anarcho-capitalist thinker alive today. I hope he's still alive. He was sick a while back. I, should, I need to check up on him, actually, and see what's going on. He is the greatest anarcho-capitalist thinker, in my opinion. Even greater than Stefan Molyneux. You know, as Ben Stone did a lot of research, he did a podcast about this. As he said, when Ronald Reagan came into office, he was going to cut funding for the B-1 bomber. He actually lowered taxes. There was some other stuff. And then, bang, he gets shot by a lone gunman who's crazy. And after Ronald Reagan got shot... He raised taxes seven times. He approved funding for, I think it was 150 B-1 bombers. Basically, he did a complete 180, which made no sense because after Ronald Reagan got shot and he bounced back, this man had popular support like you wouldn't believe. Ronald Reagan could have gotten away with almost anything, politically speaking, following his recovery from being shot. I mean, it was just like the day Obama went into office, right? Just the way that people were crazy. Obama could have walked in there and said, yeah, we're going to lock up all the Japanese people in concentration camps like my hero FDR did. And all of you out there would have just cheered and applauded him and got down on your knees and licked his ball sack as you turned in your Japanese neighbors for incarceration. And it was the same thing with Reagan. After Reagan walked out of that hospital, he was a god. He could have done anything. And what did he do? He completely changed his agenda and marched to the tune of the shadow organizations. He raised the taxes. He spent more money on social programs, even though you think he didn't. He dumped more into the military-industrial complex. Obama's not in charge of anything. He's just a figurehead.
when Hillary Clinton gets elected president, after Obama, which she will, she's not going to be in charge of anything. And the thought I want to leave you with, because I think I am going to break this into two anarchy moments. So come back in... Let's see, I think this one's going to go out on Friday, so come back on Monday for the other thought I have. The Secret Service. You may think the Secret Service exists to protect the president from being killed by crazy lone gunmen. And certainly that's part of their job. But just as in the Roman Empire, the Empire, always, the Emperor, not the Empire, the Emperor always had a contingent of guards that followed him around. And while certainly they were there to protect the Emperor, due to all the pol politics going on behind the scenes, those guards were also there to make sure the Emperor did do certain things or didn't do certain things. And I would submit the exact same thing is true of the Secret Service. Yeah, I mean, they're there to keep the president alive. But they're also there to make sure the president doesn't step on any cracks or think for himself, or do anything that hasn't been approved of by his shadow land overlords. <laughs>